Welcome to our second episode in our Kerbal Space Program Career Mode Tutorial. Today we're going to be learning all the things about science and research. We'll be learning about how to get science by running experiments, performing crew reports, and doing some EVA. And then we're going to learn how to spend that sweet, sweet science to unlock some new goodies for ourselves. And as a gentle reminder, if you've enjoyed this video or the series, I'd love it if you liked this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks. Now, let's head to the VAB. We're going to start here in the VAB and create our first science vessel. We start with our command pod. Usually, the command pod is how we start creating our craft. So, by default, it's here. I'm going to click on it, and here we have the command pod appearing uh, in the main part of our window. Now, you're probably reaching for the engine tab to add an engine to our craft, but not so fast. We actually don't need an engine for this video. Uh, we're actually going to grab some science right from the launch pad. But first to do that, we need to add some science modules. So we're going to click on the science category here on the left. And we can see that currently we only have one science part available to us, the mystery goo containment unit. Um, now let's click on it and just attach two onto our command pod. Um, make sure that you don't put any in front of the crew hatch in the pod. Uh, because if there's something blocking the hatch, our curb knot won't be able to get out. So if we look at the pod here, this part is the crew hatch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my right mouse button by holding and dragging to get us to the back. And I'm going to attach two of these pods here. So I want you to note that this is a bit different from how we attached the engine and the parachute in the last tutorial. There's no green spheres here to denote attachment points. Um, we can stick these goo containers anywhere we like, just like this. I do want you to note that we can control the orientation of the pod with the uh, Q, E, W, A, S, and D keys. So you can see me moving, you know, rotating around using the A and D keys. Uh, kind of rotating this direction uh, using the W and S keys. Uh, and we can also do a, kind of like a more fine rotation by holding shift with any of these modifier keys. So anyway, once we get two containment vessels on here, one and two, we're going to go ahead and name our vessel. And today this vessel is going to be the Liberty Bell, if I can spell, Liberty Bell, uh, after the Liberty Bell 7, the capsule that Gus Grissom took into space. Uh, fun fact, the hatch on the Liberty Bell 7 uh, was rigged to explode off in case of emergency, but uh, because of an accident when it splashed down the ocean, it blew, and fortunately Gus was saved, but the, sank, uh, the, the capsule sank into the ocean. Uh, in 1961 and it wasn't until 1999 that people went looking for it and recovered it if you actually want to see the the capsule you can uh, it is currently on a display in a museum in Kansas uh, but now with our basic science vessel all built let's head to the launch pad now that we're on the launch pad we can start to collect our science there are three main ways to get science here, and that's through running experiments in our modules, cr through crew reports, and EVA, or Extra Vehicular Activity Reports. Let's start by running an experiment on one of the modules that we've attached onto our command pod. Let's zoom in on our, spare, on our spacecraft, and then right-click on one of our containers. I'm going to use my mouse wheel to do that, and I'm going to drag with my right mouse button to get to the back. And I'm going to right-click on one of these containers, and we right click on objects on our spacecraft whenever we want to interact with them and this doesn't just work for these containment units here. So we have this box that comes up and now we have this option to observe the mystery goo. We're going to do that by clicking on the on the blue box to the left of the text here. And that brings up the science window for this module. We have three buttons on the right, a description of what to do here or what's going on, and some bars down below. Um, right up here we reset the experiment with this button. And then we have these green and blue buttons to talk about. The green button locks in the experiment at this current location and keeps the experiment. And the blue button transmits the science from this location. We can't actually send science right now because we don't have an antenna on our spacecraft. But we'll show you how that works later. Sending science renders the module inoperable for this mission. And transmitting science only nets you a percentage of the science you would get by keeping the science. So when we keep science with the green button, we get this much. But when we transmit it we only get this much 
uh, it's a little less. And the reason why there's that kind of trade-off is that <clears throat> when you transmit science, you actually don't have to recover the the containment unit itself. Like this, this is something that kind of uh, is applicable to if we're sending probes to another planet where we don't ever expect to see that back. Um, we were more than happy to take that hit. So. And you've probably noticed that I've kind of said per location. There are many locations to do science in. Um, at the launch pad, flying over the grasslands, landing on the grasslands, in the water, in low orbit, in high orbit, around the moon, deep space, around other planets, you know, whatever. Um, each locale is called a biome, and you can run multiple experiments in each biome. And you just get more and more science. So we're going to keep this experiment, and we can see here that this goo container remains open, denoting that it's been used, and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to keep signs from both of these, and that's because just keeping the signs from one biome isn't enough to max all your science points. And the last way we're going to collect science is, not the last, I'm sorry, but the next way is that we're going to have a crew port. We click on the command mo module here, on the command pod, and we can click on crew port. And we can either save the experiment um, or we can transmit it. Here we're going to save it because, again, we cannot transmit. And finally, the last way in which we can collect science is the EVA report. Um, EVA report means a report of being of what the Kerberon experiences while we are outside of the, of the spacecraft. So when we mouse over the command pod, uh, over the hatch area, we see this little pop up says crew hatch. When we right click then, I'm sorry, left click then, we can click EVA and we are in control of our Kerberon. He's holding on to the side of it for dear life. What we're going to do is that we're going to right click on Jebediah Kerman, click the EVA button, and again, we're going to keep it, and we're going to board, and he gets back inside the pod. And we've collected all the science we can from here, so what we're going to do is go ahead and recover our vessel. We're brought back to the Space Center. We see that we've gotten a bunch of science. We've got science from the crew report, the EVA report, and we've gotten two bits of science from the two mystery goo canisters. We see here that we've gotten three science from the first one and only 0.7 science from the second one. So there is a bit of diminishing returns. We've got some money back from recovering the entire spacecraft hull, and uh, no experience for Jebediah Kerman this time because he has... He didn't take off, he just kind of sat there, and that's not really worthy of experience. But we're going to click done, and then we're going to head into the research and development area next. Okay, so now let's click on our research and development area. We're greeted here with this ginormous tech tree. We've got this first piece here, I'm going to click here to start, and we can see what research nodes are available to us, and we can see all the stuff we have. So when we click this start node here, we can see that we have we have these six parts available to us. We've used, uh, we haven't used the basic fin, but we've used the command pod, this, the flea, the mystery goo containment unit, and this parachute. And up here, we can see how much science we have available to us. That's 18.6 science. That seems like a number of science. And we see that from this starting point, we have access to these two nodes. And when we mouse over, we see the cost of each one. And when we click, we can see what parts we get. So with basic rocketry, we get this swivel liquid fuel engine, uh, the RT-10 hammer solid fuel booster, which is like the one we used in the past, except this one's a little bigger. And we have a fuel tank. So we'll be using that in a little bit. And over here, we have engineering 101. And with engineering 101, we get a two hot thermometer. Uh, which is another science thing that we can get. Uh, the communi Communitron 16, our first antenna, so we can start sending science. Uh, we have a stack decoupler, which will let us detach things. And we have the communi Communitron 16S, which is a surface mount version of this, the other one, of this thing. Uh, identical, but uh, a little different in how they mount. So let's go ahead and get that research. And when we research both of them, we can see that these have lit up. And so once we start getting more science, 
over here we have general rocketry for 20 science that'll get us uh, a larger fuel booster a larger fuel tank and a different engine uh, here in stability we get this aerodynamic nose cone and the winglet and some radial decouplers we'll talk about decouplers in a bit and over here we have some heat shields a barometer radiator panel service bay and a micro landing strut we can't afford this any of this this is 15 this is 18 that's 20 so let's go back to the VAB and let's build ourselves some more things so I'm gonna start over I'm gonna click over oh, this new button here and I'm gonna start building our cell building us a new rocket so we got the command pod um, well before I forget let's get the parachute on here and now we're gonna do something a little different um, we're gonna put a fuel tank on the bottom actually no let's let's not do that let's do something a little different a little more different uh, we want to bring this back to the earth not earth I'm sorry Kerbin and the thing is is that you don't want to br bring too much back with the parachute um, the parachute can only hold so much so over here I'm going to go to the coupling I'm going to put the stack decoupler underneath and then the fuel tank I'll put that fuel tank there and I'm going to grab the new engine we got I'm going to do this the swivel fuel engine cool right I'm going to go to communication um, I'm going to grab the communitron I'm going to rotate it so it's like right in the side there awesome I'm going to go to science and now the too hot thermometer let's just put that there and I want to grab let's take two of these uh, these pots so we have this functioning rocket and if we look over here the way we've built this out Kerbal Space Program is smart enough to realize that uh, we probably want these things on separate stages and which is perfectly fine um, I'm glad to help it out but always check your staging all right, so now let us head to the launch pad. All right, here we are on the launch pad again, but now with our Liberty Bell 2. So we've got some goals for this launch and this mission. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect temperature data from the launch pad and transmit it. We can see our little thing here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna log the temperature. And I'm going to transmit it. But before I hit the transmit button, I'm gonna click this here and this is our resources window now our resources keeps track of our oxidizer our liquid fuel uh, these are the two components that we need to actually use our engine we have monopropellant which we're not going to use here we should probably empty that oh curses and we have our electric charge our electric charge is how much energy we have and as i transmit this note that uh up here it's told me that I transmitted my data correctly, but you notice that my electric charge went down to two. Um, that's the problem. When you send data, when you transmit data, it uses your electric charge. So you must be thinking like, well, how am I going to use my electric charge now when I only have two? Well, much like your car, this rocket has an alternator and running the engine will actually recharge the battery and we'll see that. Right, so we've got some signs just by doing the temperature getting the temperature which is fantastic uh, I'm gonna launch my craft and I'm gonna aim it towards the sea so my goal here overall is that I'm gonna try to send this out over the water and I'm going to deploy my parachute and float down to the ocean hopefully and when I'm floating down I'll have plenty of time hopefully plenty of time to get some goo readings a temperature reading and a crew report while in flight and then once again i'll do those things when i've splashed down uh, i'm not sure how much time i'm going to have that so i might move a little quickly uh, because we have this is a smaller engine and i also want to note that the solid rocket booster we were using before had no real kind of control when it came to uh thrust it was on or off here we have 
actual use of a throttle. You can see the throttle here, and you can control that by using the left shift and the left control. I'm going to put about midway here. We don't need all the thrust in the world. We're going to eat up our fuel pretty quickly. But I'm going to launch, and I'm going to turn our vessel eastward when I launch. Activate my SAS. And here we go. I'm going to launch. I'm going to turn my craft ever so slightly towards the east. You can see my fuel going down pretty precipitously, but we also see that my electric charge is going up, my alternator is working. And that is it when it comes to my fuel, don't have that much. Um, and I'm going to hit my stage again, and that's the decoupler, it pops that off. And now, one more time, I activate the last stage with the space bar, and I send out my chute. It looks like I've cleared the ocean so I'll be over the water and now I'm gonna click right click on the thing like man take my crew report and I'm gonna send that I don't know if I have nope I don't have enough electricity to send it that's okay it'll the data will still be there but I'm gonna right click on the mystery goo observe it while flying at Kerbin to keep that experiment and I'm gonna wait, oh, no, I can still grab the thermometer. I'll log that temperature, I'm gonna save it. So, this kind of complicates things. Um, your craft only has enough space to hold a certain amount of data. And if I can't transmit things, I have to keep it on board. So that's why I'm not gonna be able to uh, log the temperature when I hit water. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make another crew report once I hit the water, but I will be able to EVA. So I'm gonna fast forward time a little bit and get us down in the water. Da, da, da. And I'm gonna back off to real time once we get close. And we've touched down, excellent. So let's see what we can do. Can we take another crew report? Yes, we can. Excellent, we can do that. Can we take another temperature report? It looks like not. We have not been able to transmit that data, so we have to hold it. But let's grab some more mystery goo data. And we're going to get some force science being here. I'm going to hold that. And here, I'm going to left click. I'm going to hit EVA. And my Kerbin. It's going to make an EVA report from the water. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to press B to board. I'm back in here. I'm going to click the recover vessel button. And look at all we've got. We've got a crew report from Kerbin's water. You can get two science. Crew report while flying over the water. EVA report in the water. Temperature scan while flying over the water. Mystery goo while flying at Kerbin. Mystery goo from the water, and we recovered the entire vessel that suffered the flight. And that gives us 38.4 science, so we can go buy some new things. That's pretty awesome. We've done a lot this episode, haven't we? We've collected science for the first time. We then went and spent said science. Then we just went and turned around and built a more complex rocket and collected, you guessed it, more science. We use a decoupler to ditch our empty fuel tank and engine, coming back to the surface of Kerbin, just with the command pod and what was attached to it. And now your homework. I want you to start by building your own science ship and start collecting science everywhere. You should be in range of the water, the shore, grasslands, and maybe the highlands, depending on how you build your craft and uh, depending on how you use the parts now available to you. Explore everywhere. Get that science. Next time, we're going to be talking about designing some more multi-stage and more complex rockets. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you've enjoyed this video and this series, do me a solid and like and subscribe. Happy flying. Uh -huh.